ready. Never let them be day to talk. It's harsh. I wanna watch the television. And I see some kids in prison, some bombs, some people missing, some people going to war, people dying on the streets, people running from police. Yo, what is it, people? Yeah, people. Please try and believe that you can be that open book. Hi, Mr. E. Welcome to the program. So, today we're talking about history, also known as his story. Today on the news, why are we being lied to? You know, what is it in history that they really don't want to tell us? You know, I'm here to inform you that we've been lied to um, in, in uh, many ways during the narrative of the mainstream history that we thought something is massively incorrect. I'm just going to show you some news or, you know, some of the Mr. E news and evidence of that. And you can make up your own minds about it. So. So for a while now I've been thinking, how am I going to present this video, there's just so much. You might have to bear with me on this one, it might not be uh, in the correct order or it might not even be everything all in this video, I might have to make another video and, and just work on this topic. So. Enigmatic ancient sites built according to similar techniques everywhere on the planet, implying a transmission of knowledge. Absence of archives or explanation about the means and techniques utilized. A particular care in the choice of rocks. Unfinished elements. An advanced design accompanied by a precise construction contrary to the knowledge and simple means supposedly used at the time. Astronomical orientations of major sites in reference to the cycle of precession of the equinoxes. An archaeological site pushing back with certainty the beginnings of human sedentarization to the start of the last era of brutal climate changes over planet about 13,000 years ago. An archaeological site implying the use of sound frequencies for reasons still unknown. Presence of the golden ratio geometry, opposing the knowledge commonly attributed at the time. A connection between the cubit of the Great Pyramid, the Royal Keen, and the meter, implying a knowledge of the dimensions of the Earth before its measurement in 1795 and its transmission throughout the ages. The positioning of ancient sites within a geometric planetary frame connected to the golden ratio, the degrees, and the metric system. The location of site at the intersection of points of discontinuity of Earth's crust and the magnetic equator. Scriptures, myth, or sacred text mentioning one or more advanced civilization vanishing, confirmed at various places by the discovery of remains. Facing all these facts and connections, I put forward that, instead of chance, I choose what seems to be the most rational explanation. The existence of a very advanced civilization in the past, who would have disappeared following a cataclysm. In 1965, the French ethnologist Francis Mazière talked about a connection between Easter Island, Peru, and Egypt, stating that all three are located, according to him, on some sort of magnetic Ecuador or the Earth. A great circle that was invisible prior to having mapped the entire Earth, which is, as you will see, a huge problem. In this alignment, we are not looking at the date of construction of the structures, as some are spread in time over many centuries or thousands of years, but we are rather looking at their locations, most of them being built and rebuilt over the ruins of ancient temples. Let's first look at the distance ratio between some of these sites. Let's look at the Earth from above. The red circle that surrounds it is our great circle. The distance between Angkor Vat and Nazca equals the distance between Mohenjo-Daro and Easter Island. The distance between Angkor Vat and Mohenjo-Daro equals the distance of Mohenjo-Daro between Giza and also the distance between Nazca and Easter Island. I believe that at this stage of the investigation, no one will be surprised to see the golden ratio showing up again. The distance between Angkor Vat and Giza times the golden ratio equals the distance between Giza and Nazca. And the distance between Giza and Nazca times the golden ratio equals the distance between Nazca and Angkor Vat. They've been finding lately in the Amazon because of deforestation and, and LIDAR, they're finding these uh, ancient civilizations buried beneath the Amazon rainforest. And they find evidence of human communities buried in the Amazon basin. So yeah, they're just uh, uncovering a lot of these different um, uh, geoglyphs, these geometrically shaped ditches. I think they found in this one Western state called Acre, they found 450 so far of these geometrically shaped ditches known as geoglyphs. This was just a BBC News article from 2018. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this, but 
sprawling Maya network discovered under Guatemala jungle, and they researchers found more than 60,000 hidden Maya ruins. Basically, what I've noticed, these houses that we're looking at are underground and a melted, it looks like a melted ground. Like they've just splashed something over it, like, I don't know, some sort of plasma discharge. What I discovered is I did a lot of time in Malta underground in a place called Manuel Island. And it's a star fault, or a star city rather, on an island. And I couldn't believe, I haven't clocked this before, you've got the scratch marks the same as Egypt by the way, this is all the same. And what I clocked was, it's the same layout as the Giza Pyramid. A few interesting features that still remain a bit of a mystery. On the left is apparently a coal chute, where I presume coal was sent down from the surface above. Look at these marks here. And on the right, we have the other side of that large flue tunnel or access tunnel. My travels in this megalithic part of the country. Well, first things first, I come across a star fault. Now this star fault was just as old as anything I see in Malta. But look at the size of these blocks, polygonal or what? And now this is limestone, by the way. And this limestone, was, it was full of flint, flint all over it. But have a look. Megalithic blocks. So I didn't want to put my hand in there, so it gets a bit scary. But I wanted to see as much as I could. So it says this was built in the 1800s, but I don't believe any of that cobblers, none of it. Other uses that we're not aware of, but I will work it out, trust me. Now look at the size of it, this is part of the star fault again, and this is the other side of it. So this 45 degree angle is this side, but it's the other side. And again, I'm not going to keep saying, I'm going to keep saying this, look at the size of these blocks. Smashed to smithereens. You can't actually access this part, it's been left alone. Well, we had to climb over a couple of fences and through some bush and all that thing. But, let me get to the block work, because the blocks were man-made. Every single block was man-made, as in poured. As in, it was a concrete-based material and it had stones, shells, fossils, and all sorts of stuff sitting inside the concrete. A lot of the blocks were 150 by 90 centimeters. So that's one and a half meters by 90 centimeters. I couldn't get the depth, obviously, because I couldn't get my tape in, I don't know where it'd end. But on the face of it, vertical and horizontal, 150 by 90. It is 83 feet from ground level. The top of the capstone, of Evergreen Dolmen. Evergreen Dolmen is attached by a walkway to an artificially constructed mountain, Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is 186 feet high, exactly double the height of the Evergreen Dolmen. This is the pink vault in Giant's Playground. There are two pink stones which are not from this area, we believe they're from Pipestone area, that have been cut and set into a double black wall of black granite that extends in two layers to my right. There are many enigmatic giant ruins that can be found within Japan. Super megaliths, so old, a number of the largest have eroded away to a state of unrecognition. An archaeological site which at the time of its life would have undoubtedly dwarfed nearly all other civilizations upon Earth. A civilization which far outstretches the modern urban sprawl of the Japanese coastlines. A lost super civilization responsible for the construction of numerous pyramids found throughout the landscape. A posit of a past mega metropolis, or now lost super civilization, having once called Japan home. Chris Any perplexing sites we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue. Evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. A highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. Although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, there also exists the numerous caves and temples hewn from the solid bedrocks carved with such accuracy and vision 
They elude recreation after several astonishing realizations that it may have been right under our nose this entire time. A civilization that no matter which ancient ruin you find yourself within the world over, undoubtedly vanished during a mysterious event. Evidence seemingly presented itself. Now these are in excess. These have to be more than 400 tons. It's hard to estimate at the moment. We're going to go up, go up top and see how deep they are, maybe take some measurements. If we can, they're so big it's almost impossible. But as I walk down here, you'll just see the magnitude of these. I mean, look, this is at least, at least 12 foot tall, maybe 15 feet. Look how wide it is, it's like 12 paces. This is a blocked doorway with almost identical kind of design in the lintel as those we find in Tiwanaku and Pumapunku in Bolivia. So that's interesting to spot that here. Further down, I mean, we're not even at the lowest level here. This is just one level and you can see the megalithic style of the blocks. So potentially these are at the time of the first dynasty in Egypt, before even Stonehenge was being built, and so on and so forth. Obviously they've made a retaining wall here, but these are just massive. They're not obviously as big as the, the western wall, the stones there, or in the quarry, but these are worth noting here, just to get a sense of size. That's why it's worth being down here. This is all the area, the, the pre-Phoenician or Phoenician temple, a bit of both. But look how far this goes down, right in the center of it. All the blocks here making up the foundations. It is a massive megalithic platform. It seems that from the very earliest times in ancient Egypt, high technology was just part of their routine when it came to masonry. And it, it continued all the way up to the Ptolemaic times and beyond. And I believe with the connections with Baalbek and the styles and even these as well, but even the earliest phase, like the Phoenician temple, the, the Western Wall and so forth, advanced tool making, almost like modern style, something that Chris Dunn. Gaps you can see between the stone. What is unusual is that these gaps take sand, seemingly endlessly, you can just keep on pushing sand down there. If they were just laid down on top of the bedrock, these gaps would have filled up with sand long ago. Our guide, Yusuf Awan, told us that his father, the famous indigenous wisdom keeper Hakim El Awan, showed him these very same gaps when he was a little boy. So for at least 30 years, these gaps have swallowed all the sand that's gone down them. And let's be honest, it's more likely that they have been absorbing Saharan sand for hundreds, if not thousands of years. From this, it seems eminently clear that there must be a cavity beneath these blocks. And rather than being the foundation of the causeway, they might form the ceiling of a chamber below it, something big enough to still accept the desert sand from above. In 1995, the notion of a lost civilization was not a new idea. That notion has been around for a very long time. We can take that notion actually back thousands and thousands of years. The most famous example is Plato, the Greek philosopher Plato, who gave us the story of Atlantis. From Plato comes the story of Atlantis, a great advanced civilization which had navigating and seafaring skills, which could explore the world, which built gigantic buildings, which had advanced knowledge in every area, which was prosperous and powerful. Okay, right, so all that stuff there, that's all related to um, ancient megalithic stone, but there's um, a lot of other theories that are uh, come out when you look into ancient buildings and you know ancient sites or ruins or any anything from the past or history related um, and you get obviously a lot of these conspiracy theories online and some of these uh, being under some kind of mud flood which uh, seems separate to the very ancient megaliths that um, you know I've been showing you. History is a set of lies that people have agreed upon, Napoleon said. Is it plausible that after a great catastrophe, the worldwide remains of the preceding high culture were not only systematically destroyed, but also pressed into an image of history imposed on us? Some available information suggests that even after the worldwide game-changing event we call the reset or mud flood, there still remained countless complete and beautiful cities that were conquered by a new power elite and then repurposed as world's fairs. Beck, Germany, 1895. Although a total of 750,000 visitors came, 
The German Nordic Trade and Industry Exhibition closed with a financial deficit. The exhibition buildings were completely demolished after the end of the event, and a residential area was created on the Marley site, which became part of the Lübeck suburb of St. Gertrude, which was developed in terms of urban development in the first half of the 20th century. Nuremberg, Germany, 1906. Despite the 2.5 million visitors, the Bavarian Jubilee Exhibition of 1906 is a financial loss for Nuremberg. St. Louis, USA, 1904. In the end, the Expo made a loss of $8.5 million. This is the equivalent of more than $250 million today. Philadelphia, USA, 1926. The exhibition attracted far fewer visitors than the 10 million originally planned. In the end, it was unable to service its debts and went bankrupt in 1927. They're quite big because just underneath the mouth you see three men sitting on a bench. So you get an idea of how big it is. And you compare the men to the door on the right hand side, the left here. But you can see these columns. Uh, like this is extremely old. Uh, you wouldn't have something decorative then bury it, would you? You can see now where the steps were going to the doors. There'd be about two or three steps. Can you imagine what it was like originally? I know. <laughs> yeah, they had to dig out the whole world. Skeleton crews. I don't think there was many people around to look at that golden civilization. So that's, excuse me, earlier civilization. With a supreme art just left out in the open. Don't see that anymore. That's Rome, John. The pyramids in Rome. Oh, these pyramids, the same pyramid in Wyoming. In the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think's happened? Do you think that uh, we've had a, a you know a, a massive flood due to the Younger Dryas period 11,600 years ago? Or do you think that, you know, um, we've had that plus extra smaller floods? Let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. This is Mystery. If I get rich enough, I'll buy a forest for my use. Never let go, it's your choice. It's hard to stop now. Because your choice means every living human and it's hot now. Can you hear me? I said it's hard to stop now. And soon you won't even call the shots out. The world's forever changing and rearranging. The content is caging and slowly it's breaking. We're like a deadly disease that's in the making. Stuck in this false world that we keep on creating. The world needs rearranging and changing. This is cool niche and leaving your heart aching and the main thought is to live in that dime most cool.